If you have your Bibles, turn with us. It's good to be with you. We thank God for you. We're closer to the coming of the Lord than we've ever been. Amen. It's good to have all of you here. We want to continue to pray throughout the week. Uh, we forgot these special requests that we've been talking about this morning. Don't forget them. Don't forget our people that are so sick. And uh, do, do everything you can this week to uh, commune with God for our country, for Israel, for all the sick, and for your mission that God has that only you can complete. I have a message upon my heart this morning that uh, the world doesn't want to hear. I have a message this morning that I must preach on because it is what has destroyed our country. It's destroyed the world that we live in. And it's because of the enemy of God, Lucifer, that God cast out of heaven when he revolted against God before God had ever made man. There was a battle that went on in the ages of time when everything was not as it is today. Uh, the Bible speaks about a time where he came down and made all creation. And let me say to you this morning, I stand amazed at how great and how massive God is. Amen. I've tried to preach it. I've never, ever got it told. But God is beyond anything that you can imagine. God is beyond uh, a greatness that we can't even fathom. Our minds can't go where God is. And before anything was, God was. God has always been almighty. God was before the beginning. And God still is. And uh, amongst, whenever I preach the message that I'm going to preach this morning, I want you to understand that uh, this thing that we live in today, that we call a world that we're a part of, it has walked away from God. Like many times, God's word is recorded. Thank God for his word. Do you thank the Lord for his precious word that has been preserved and has been brought down to us? It gives us record of who God is and what great things God has done. And amongst all of the evil and amongst all that Satan has done to destroy everything that God loved, Thank God, God is still here. And God is still the answer for us. I want to bring it down just a little closer. God is the answer for you. God has what you need. God will supply your needs according to his riches you see everything was made of God John told us the one that leaned upon the breast of Jesus he said in the beginning was the word the word was with God but the word was God all things were made by him and without him not anything was made was made and in him was life and the life was the light of men if you're sitting in darkness, if you don't know what to do, if you don't know what the answer is, I can tell you, it's in Jesus Christ. Amen. He is the light. He is the answer. He is God. He's very God. And the Bible says that he never came, and this is what I came to preach on today, and that is the sin that has destroyed the most beautiful thing that God made, and that is man. He has done everything he can to destroy every one of you, and he'll continue to do that till you cross the line of worlds. And let me tell you, the Bible says it is appointed unto man once to die, and after this, the judgment. And let me say to you, the judgment is because God is holy, God is righteous, God hates sin. Satan hated God. Satan revolted against God before anything was. 
And after God had made everything, He separated the firmament from the waters. He gave us the space that we have. And He separated the waters from the, from the earth. He called the earth the earth and the waters the seas. But bless your heart, when He had finished everything He made, all the creations, all the greenery, all of everything that He had made, he made man in his own image. In the image of God created he them. Let me tell you, we've got some people that think they're real smart. And we've got some people and scientists that think they can look back billions of years and tell you how it was. Let me tell you, I don't know even how to start to look at what God saw and when he saw it and when he did it. But I know that God did it all and after he done everything that he done and just spoke it into existence from the light that separated the dark from the light. He separated the waters from the earth. He separated the earth from the heavens. When he first saw everything that there was, it was void and without form. But God spoke it and it became. Amen. And let me tell you, you stand here today. You're not alone. God owns you. Amen. You are God's whether you want to be or whether you don't want to recognize it. You still belong to God. And when everything has finished and your life Every path, path you've walked, every accomplishment you've made, every time you failed or succeeded, when it all comes down to an end, you'll understand what I'm trying to tell you here today. You'll see God. And you'll give an account before God. The old songwriter wrote the song, The Old Account Was Settled Long Ago. Let me tell you something. There is a problem you have. There's a problem that I have. But God loved us enough after He had made us and He saw what sin done to us, how it destroyed the beautiful thing that God said after He had done it all. He said, it's good. Sin is the product of evil. Sin is the transgression of what God wanted. What God spoke. What God commanded. After God put man in the most beautiful garden. In the paradise that he set him in because he loved him so much. He didn't want him to toil. He didn't want him to suffer. He wanted him to communicate with him. He wanted to love us. He wanted us to love him. But there was something that had happened before that. And he hated God so much. He came down in the Garden of Eden. And I've, I've studied this. I've looked at it from every angle I can see. But the devil had to come to the Garden. And God left the doors open so he come. God could have kept him out of there. You see, God has power over Satan. Just like he has power over everything. Yes. Amen. Amen. You know, back when I read through the 60s and all that, you know, everybody come up with this saying, the devil made me do that. Well, let me tell you, the devil is doing everything he can to you and against you and against God because God loves you more than all the creation he had made. Amen. Come on. Amen. After he had finished it all, he made us in his own image and he gave us power and dominion over all that there is it belongs to us because God gave it to us but there will be a time when everything will finish and God will ask for an account and the thing that will keep you from heaven the thing that will destroy you while you're on earth is the thing we call sin. To him that knoweth to do good and doeth it not, to him it is sin. Sin is a transgression of the law of God. Amen. Very simple. You say, what is sin? 
Why is there sin? There is sin because the devil hates God. The very adversary of God, the very enemy of God is Satan. He was once amongst the glory of God. He was once over the music that God loves so much. You see, we have a lot of music here on earth. We all understand music. Some we don't like. Some we love. But let me tell you, God loves it. And one time Lucifer was the angel over all of God's glorious music that went on before God made man. And he hates God. He came down in the garden and he caused the woman that God had made for man. And you know, we need to get things in perspective. We need to understand that God made man and he made him in his own image. That doesn't give man the power to become something that God didn't want. God wanted us to be able to make our own choices. God wanted us to choose to love Him. Amen. To want to commune with Him. To want to love Him. Yes. But we also had the choice that we can make to not love Him. You see, God could command the angels and command them to do anything He wanted to. God still has the power to bring judgment upon you. But God made you and made you so that you would want to make the choice to love Him. Yeah. Satan had to come to the garden. God tried His people. The Bible says that God has a tried people. There's times in your life you'll come and you'll have the opportunity to make a choice. You understand what I'm talking about to make a choice. There was a time when Eve that was given to Adam had to make a choice. Satan appeared unto her, her being the weaker sex. The weaker she was made from Adam, she was given to Adam for a helpmate. But she chose because this, the Satan that came down to her was a beautiful thing. And it told her everything she wanted to hear. That's what he does. And because Adam loved her, after the devil had persuaded her heart to transgress what God had said, he said, of all the trees of the garden, you can eat and love. Everything I've given you, all of it, enjoy it. But I want you to let you know that I am God. And of the tree of knowledge, don't eat thereof. God gives us the same opportunity. There is a time after our birth because of not knowing and because of not understanding that God has provided for us. But when we come to that time in our life that we know that God wants this and God has given us this and we should do this, the age of accountability, we become accountable to God. Amen. Yeah. Then our choices become our result of who we are. Let me say to you, the soul, Ezekiel said, the soul that sinneth shall surely die. Sin brings death. God gave the commandments to Moses because he wanted his people to understand this is what he wanted. He reinstated what he wanted for man. After man had sinned and God had cast him from the garden. And he went out into the the, the beautiful world that God had given him. God came down and spoke through his prophet. And he said, if you transgress what I have told you, 
it'll cause you to die. You see, today we don't call sin, sin anymore. Yeah, follow me. Today we think we have the power to choose whether this is bad or good. He said He gave us good and evil. We have the choice to choose what favors God or what goes against what God wants for us. And we've colored it up and we've painted it up. You know, what we have on our streets today, and I heard yesterday, as a matter of fact, they had it on, on the news, and they showed this man that was dressed up like a woman, you know, trans, and that he had become welcomed into the podium to preach a trans gospel. It's been ordained. We've come a long way from what God done there on the day of Pentecost. Yes. On the day of Pentecost, the church was born. And it was born of power of the Holy Ghost. And it was born pure. God gave us a church that still lives today. But man has chosen to walk sinfully before God. And they've come to the place to where they don't call sin, sin anymore. It's, it's offensive to the world that we live in. People have come to the place to where they, they think they can decide what's sin and what's not sin. We have so much sin amongst the body of Christ. People doing what they say is okay and what somebody else is doing. And we say, well, they do it and they get by with it. Why can't we? And the grace of God, you know, Paul said, shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. <laughs> you see, under the law, God came down, gave Moses the commandments. I could take the time to read them, but I'll let you read them if you want to read them. They're in the Old Testament where God had called Moses up on the mountain and he, he put his words in the stones that he brought down. The tablets that he had. And it said, Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt, have no, thou shalt not worship any graven images. Thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not lie, thou shalt not commit adultery. Love your mothers and your fathers. But we have said why that was different then. We have said and we have come to the place to where it's hard to distinguish a Christian from a sinner. Because the, the word that is spoken from the podium so many times says it's all right for you to sin a little bit. It's all right for you to sin more or less every day. Well, it's not all right. And let me speak to you as a, as a minister of God's word. The soul that sinneth, it still will die. Amen. The soul that sinneth will still give an account to a living God. Yes. That not only made it all, but he made you also. I don't care what a brother tells you. I don't care what a sister tells you. I don't care what a big fancy preacher that has all these people following him tell you. Sin is still sin. Sin still requires justice from Almighty God. God is still holy. God hasn't accepted all these things that the world's telling you it's all right to do. We have a world of people that call themselves Christians and they're going along with all of these evil things that man has done between man and man and woman and woman and changing of our sexes to be whatever we want to be. We can say all of this is okay and the world will slap you on the back and 
say you're all right. God knows and God has the grace for you. But let me tell you something. God still hates sin and it makes no difference what we've done with it. God will still require payment for it. It's time that we understand that God is still God and we're still subject to God and God hates the devil. He's already prepared a place for him and God hates the sin that he causes amongst his greatest creation. Sin is a transgression of the law, period. Sin is going against God's will, period. Sin can't be painted up and cosmetic up and made look like it's okay. The Bible says that it even comes to us sometimes through the angels of Satan. Yep. Says that he'll appear unto us as an angel of light. He'll look like Jesus. He'll look like it's okay. And I think that comes through a lot of preachers and deacons that has a very weak message towards a sinful world. As much as I love you, I'll tell you, I'd love to wrap my arms around my body here and around you that love this little church and us walk right on into heaven together. Amen. But as much as I love you, I'm going to tell you here today, you go against God's will and you'll be judged accordingly. Amen. Amen. Yes, sir. I'll not favor you over top of sin and I'll not preach you a gospel that says it's okay for you to sin. Sin is a transgression of what God wants. Sin is going against God's will. No preacher has the right to pat you on the back and tell you it's okay for you to sin a little bit. Because it's not. Apostle John that leaned upon the breast of Jesus and carried the gospel there in Ephesus when things were so ungodly. And spent the rest of his days after he'd been cast on to Patmos and brought back to the, to the city of Ephesus where it was filled with idolatry and people were just doing everything they wanted to. This same John... This same John, he said, I would that you sin not. The message of God is for every one of you. Amen. Brother James, don't sin. That's right. Sin is when you know to do good and do it not. Sin is when God said, don't do this, and you think it's okay to go ahead and do it. God didn't destroy the word that he gave Moses. People say, well, that was under the law. I'm not under the law. Let me say, thank God you're not under the law because you can never live good enough under the law to satisfy God. Amen. Thank God we do have grace and mercy from God that says, like Brother John shared with us, I would that you sin not, but if you sin, you have an advocate with the Father. In other words, Jesus pleads our case. Jesus is sitting on the right hand of God, and He's the one that looks at God and says, That's my child, Lord. Forgive them. Let me say unto you, sin is ugly. Sin always destroys. Jesus didn't do away with what God told Moses. If you rightly divide the word of God, the things that God told Moses, even though the law was so extensive, probably none of us could ever learn it all. But there's some of those back then the scribes, some of the Pharisees, Paul, Apostle Paul, I'm sure he could just about quote it to you. But it was so extensive. But God said, Thou shalt not, thou shalt not, thou shalt not. The law of God says, Here is the limit. Don't go past this, or you become guilty before me. Well, let me tell you something. Grace didn't do away with the heart of God. Amen. 
Amen. Grace did not do away with the law of God. Right. We have the law of God that Jesus fulfilled. He didn't destroy it. God didn't become weak and sinful just because He favored us. God is still holy. God still hates sin. Sin is a transgression of the law of God. We didn't know sin till the law came, the Bible says. Apostle Paul taught the Romans and he said, we, we were ignorant to it. We didn't know about it. But when the law came, sin revived. And when it revived, I died. Let me tell you, there is no excuse after you found the life of God. He that knoweth to do good. Sin through Moses was a transgression of the laws that God had gave them. They did not go away because Jesus came. When Jesus came, he fulfilled them and he went further. He spoke of the righteousness of God. Under the law, if you spoke wrong, you got your tongue cut out. Under the law, if you stole something, you got your hands cut off. There was no mercy under the law. Under the law, you were penalized. Under the law, you were judged. Under the law, you paid a price for your sins. Under grace, Jesus paid it for us. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Under grace, Jesus said, love your enemies. Do good to those that despitefully use you. But you know, we have a lot of Christian people today, when they're done wrong, they want to take vengeance and get it all evened up themselves. Well, that's not the way of Jesus. And let me say to you, the holiness that God had before He ever separated the waters from the earth, before He ever made you. You see, we've got these evolutionists that would tell you you just evolved out of some kind of a little tiny part of a cell. But let me tell you something. God made you. God created you. You're not just something that happened and evolved. God created you. You were born of your mother. God gave us the miracle of birth. God is God. Satan is the enemy of God. Satan is the deceiver of all deceivers. Be very careful who you're following. If you're a child of God, go to His Word. It'll never lie to you. If you're a child of God, ignorance won't suffice God. There's some people that don't even read the Bible, but yet they call themselves Christians. There's some people that don't want to hear the truth of God's Word because they feel like it will make them more guilty before God. Let me say to you today, sin is sin. Sin is ugly. Sin costs God His dear Son. Sin brought agony upon God's Son on Calvary that we didn't deserve. When He wanted to die, He couldn't die. He hung there and He bled. He hurt. He was falsely accused. He was badgered while He was on the cross. He was hanging there and the, the scientists and the doctors say it's impossible for a man that had lost his blood and lost everything that he lost before they hung Him on the cross there. They had beat Him. What a price he paid. They say it would be impossible for you to hang like that for six hours and ever get the breath to breathe. But he did. And he couldn't die. He couldn't die till God 
accepted his travail. Amen. He had to suffer six hours on the cross because God said that's what it would take. You say, I have sinned. What do I do? There is but one remedy for you. And there are no exceptions. You'll have to bring your sins to God through Jesus. Jesus became the propitiation for you and your sins. Jesus paid the price that you couldn't pay. It doesn't make any difference how honorary you've been. It doesn't make any difference how far in sin you've gone. God knows the depths of sin. God knows where you've done. God knows where you've gone. God knows the things that might haunt you today that you shouldn't have done. But let me tell you, there is a remedy. You turn to Jesus by faith. And God said he's given to every man a measure of faith. It's by faith or nothing. It's impossible to please God without faith. He that cometh to God must believe that he is God. And that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. The only way that you can be saved is to turn from the sins that you have lived in. Turn from the master that you have followed. And turn with your sins and bring it before God through Jesus and look up to God and say, God, I'm sorry. Amen. Yes. And I accept the finished work that Jesus done on Calvary Amen. for me. Amen. Amen. Jesus paid it all. Your sins are ugly. Your sins will send you to hell. The old prophet said, that if you sin, you'll surely die. Without the shedding of blood, he said, there is no remission. You can't work your way to heaven. You can't be good to go to heaven. You can't correct all the wrong that you've done. You can't even bring a master full of money and, and buy your way to the grace of God, it comes totally by your repentance, your turning from one master to the master. Amen. God is holy. God is righteous. You're going to have to look at this world in a different way if you're ever going to please God. The world's saying it's okay to do this. The world's saying it's okay to go here. The world's saying it's okay for you to be like this. Well, I want to tell you something today. Put a big zero around everything that you've heard and learned of the world and remember what I'm telling you right now. The only way to God is through His favor and His grace with a repentant heart and you bring your sins and you confess them before God and you turn from your sins and by faith you accept the finished work on Calvary that paid for your sin. Do you want to live? Quit sinning. You say, preacher, I don't know how to quit sinning. You're going to have to come to Jesus to do that. That's right. Amen. Amen. You can't get it all fixed up and then come to Jesus. He, he knows where you're at. And He knows the condition your heart's in. The Bible says, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. Another writer said, Jeremiah said, the heart is deceitful above all things and who can know it? It's impossible for you to get control of your heart except through Jesus. If you go against God's Word, if you, go, if you walk away from the light that God has shed towards you, if you try to make excuses for why you do what you do or go where you go, it will never, ever be sufficient when you face God. 
He said, every uh, knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that He is Jesus. Whether you ever get saved, you can choose today to not get saved. You can choose today to go on and sin like you sin. But you'll never face God with that answer. If you walk away from God, if you walk away from His will, if you walk away from Jesus, if you walk with the world, if you love the world, if you still do the things the world does, if you still want the favor of the world, you want to live both sides, you'll never make it across the finish line because God will not permit sin to go into the other side. And sin that is unrepented of and unforgiven will end up in a devil's hell. Amen. Straight out. Amen. Some of you only give God a little bit of who you are. That's not what God wants. The Bible says that His will is fulfilled in these two things. Love the Lord thy God with all thy heart. With all thy soul. And with all thy mind. And they said that the second is like unto the first. Love your neighbor as yourself. We need to find what God really wants from us. And then we need to seek it and pursue it. And let me tell you, as long as sin stands between us and God, you'll never be pleasing in the eyes of God. Sin is a transgression. Sin is action. Sin is a choice. We know that there is sin, and I, I apologize for not reading all the scriptures that I came here to read to you today, but if you'll get in the book of Romans and you'll find there in the from the anywhere from the second chapter, third chapter on, it deals with the sin and the condition that we were left in because of the sin of Adam. But it also gives us the hope that the second Adam, which is Jesus Christ, as the first Adam caused death to come upon every man and every man to become guilty, you see, why do I have to worry? I've been a good person. You can't be good enough to please God. Adam sinned. God cursed man. God required man to turn to him. You'll never get to heaven just trying to be a good man. But the second Adam, he done something for you that the first Adam couldn't do. He gave you love and grace. Let me tell you something today. If your life is filled with sin, if you're a child of God and the devil's convinced you it's okay to do a few things, you know, we've had some here that have come since we started this little church and we'll have others that will come. They'll want to go to heaven and they'll want to be a part of the church, but they'll still want to do some of the things that bring shame upon the church and upon the same of the Lord. And I've had to deal with some of those. But don't come here with sin hanging all around you and think that God's going to be pleased. You may fool me. But if you go out of this church saying you're a part of this church and you do these sinful acts that the world's all doing, you bring shame upon the Lord, not on me. But let me tell you something, children. God has not compromised with His will or His word. The soul that sinneth, the prophet He sent, that said, Thou shalt not it still stands today. That's right. God has not changed. God has not got soft. God has not through grace ever said that it's okay for you to do the things that shame Him. 
The thou shalt not that God wanted Moses to tell the people under the law. It was a guideline, moral guideline for them to separate themselves from the heathen people that they were around and would be around. God went before them and blessed them whenever they were faithful to him. God also let the judgment of sin fall upon them whenever they walked away from him and served other idols and the sins of their lives that they wanted to cover up. I don't know if, if I can ever get finished with the importance of what I came here to tell you today. If you're a child of God... You know that Jesus has forgiven you of your sins. It does not give you the right after you have been forgiven, after you have been accepted, after you have been born into the kingdom of God. There is nowhere in God's word that he's made provisions for you to go ahead and start sinning again. As your pastor, as a man of God, you may not like what I'm telling you. And I don't repent of it. I didn't come here to win a popularity contest. God put me here. And God commanded me to tell you the truth. And I'll tell you the truth even if you turn against me. But I'll stand here today and I'll say, God, help me say this. If you want the love of God to be manifested through you and upon you, you'll have to do it without sin. Otherwise, you're compromising the will of God, the plan of God. God called you, God saved you, and God raised you up above sin. And we can't walk in sin any longer. I'm not saying that God's up there with a big hammer and going to crush you in the head if you sin. John, John understood that and John preached that to the church. But God don't want you to sin. And it's not God's will and it's not okay for you to sin. If you sin, you have an advocate. You can get it taken care of. But it's not for you to say, well, the grace of God will cover that and I'll just go right on sinning because I love to do the things that are sinful. God never okayed that. And that's not God's will and that's not God's word and that's not what this old preacher is going to preach to you. I'm telling you today, if you're a child of God, get out of the sin business. Amen. If you're a child of God, bring glory to Him. Amen. Love Him. Walk worthy of the calling, the vocation with which you have been called. Amen. I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. If you want to please God, if you want to get to heaven and bring some with you, then separate yourself from sin. I'm going to ask you to stand. I'm not finished.